So, it's that time of year again. That time of year where I make all kinds of lists about movies. Actually, it's only three kinds, but still. And the first one of those is the list of films that are coming out next year that I'm the most excited for. My most anticipated, if you will. Now remember, this list isn't a guarantee of the quality of the films. I've had movies on here before that have turned out... Well, not great. These are just the movies that, at the moment, I'm really looking forward to. And the thing is, these aren't like the movies the general public is most excited for. These are the ones that I, Benedict, am personally looking forward to the most. I'm just saying that because I know someone will be like, Hey, where's Detective Pikachu? Or It 2? Or Toy Story 4? Or whatever. And those are just films that, yeah, I'm pretty hyped for, but I don't have the same level of nostalgia or love for the source material that a lot of people have. Anyway, with all that said, let's get into this. Starting off at number 10, I've got Joker. Now this is one of those that could very easily come back to bite me, because this to me looks like it's going for a lot, and it's either going to be amazing or terrible. I doubt the people will come out of this and go, yeah, it was alright, and I'm hoping for, and suspecting, it'll be the first. So far, I've loved the look of the character, and the film, overall, it's got a great cast and director, and even though I wasn't crazy about this premise when I first heard it, after everything we've seen, I think this could really work, and be a different kind of comic book film, like Logan or Deadpool. Coming in at number 9 is Hobbs and Shaw. Now yeah, this is kind of a guilty pleasure pick, because I know, even if this is exactly what I want it to be, it's not going to be a masterpiece or anything. But that's what I like about it. I don't think the Fast and Furious films that I've seen are amazing or anything, but the last two, the ones I've seen, are a ton of fun, for me at least. Ordinarily, one of those films wouldn't be on my list though, maybe in the honorable mentions, but easily my favorite part of the last film was the Statham Rock dynamic. This is one of those rare cases where I feel like a spin-off is actually really warranted. I was watching that film and thinking, I would absolutely love to see a whole film of these two. If you know me at all, you know I love a good buddy cop team-up story, or just a buddy team-up or an odd pairing team-up, they don't have to be cops. And with two very likable and charismatic leads, a great action blockbuster director, Isaac Gonzalez from Baby Driver, and Idris Elva as the villain? Come on, how can you not be at least a little excited? Next to number 8 is The Lego Movie 2. This is another kind of gamble, because I'm putting my faith in the film despite what I've seen so far. So far, the trailers have looked pretty good, but not amazing to me. Not amazing enough to be on this list. But I'm putting my faith in this franchise because, while I haven't seen Lego Ninjago, I absolutely love the first Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, so on that alone, I'm excited to see more of this world. Plus, the trailers haven't looked terrible or anything. I've gotten some chuckles out of them. And I thought the trailers for the first Lego movie looked absolutely horrendous. And I ended up loving that film, so here's hoping. Now at number 7, I've got Star Wars Episode 9. It's a little weird talking about Star Wars after this whole Last Jedi and then Solo situation. But I'll talk about that more in my box office video. As far as me personally, Star Wars was never something I grew up on. But I've really enjoyed the original trilogy since then. And I've really enjoyed these new films. A lot, actually. I had a great time with Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. I just like them, as fun space adventures. So, yeah, I'm on board for another one. I don't really know about the Star Wars stories, but the main trilogy? Sure. I do have some concerns. J.J. Abrams is coming back to direct, so while it'll probably be a lot of fun, plot-wise, it might be a bit by the books. And I'm a little worried that they're gonna throw just all the fan service into this one, as a way to make it up to all those angry fans from The Last Jedi, which I feel like could get a bit obnoxious. But hey, at the very least, I'm expecting some fun with these characters that I like, and a good conclusion to this trilogy. Then I've got Kingsman The Great Game at number 6. There's been a lot of confusion around this film, because Taron Edgerton said he's not going to be in Kingsman 3, but apparently he meant this film, which is a prequel set in the early 1900s, and he in fact is going to be in the actual Kingsman 3, coming out sometime in the future. But that just confuses me, because I wouldn't call this kind of prequel Kingsman 3. It's more of a spin-off, I guess? And I'm thinking some people just wanted a good headline, because of course Exy's not in it. He wouldn't be born for several decades. Anyway, assuming I've understood all this correctly, this is not Kingsman 3, but a prequel about how Kingsman was established, with Ray Fiennes as the lead. Apparently Matthew Vaughn is directing, which is a good sign, and the rest of the cast with Daniel Bruhl and Charles Dance looks pretty good. My only concerns are, A, Golden Circle was pretty bad, so I'm hoping Vaughn's learned from that, and B, if this is really a part of the Kingsman story that needs to be told. Because frankly, I'd more like to see what happens next with Eggsy and Harry. But hey, I'm still a fan of this series, mostly just based on how much I love the first one, so it's here on the list. Coming in at number 5 is Us. I don't have much to say about this one, because I know really nothing about it plot-wise, and I want to keep it that way. The reason it's here is because Get Out was incredible, so whatever Jordan Peele did next, it'd be on this list. Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke are starring, Jordan Peele's directing and writing, it's another relatively low-budget horror film, that's all I need or want to know. Very interested. At number 4 is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, another kind of different one from the rest of these. 
but I love Tarantino's films. Say what you will about him, he may or may not be not so great of a person, and maybe he's not super original, but just talking movie-wise, I'm a big fan. I haven't seen all of his films, but the ones I have seen are fantastic. And while Pulp Fiction and Kill Bill are great, his latest stuff is my favorite, keeping in mind I haven't seen The Hateful Eight. Django and Inglorious Bastards are easily two of my favorite films of all time, so I'm very excited to see what's next. Also, the cast is insane, with names like Brad Pitt, Leo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, Tim Roth, Timothy Oliphant, Kurt Russell, James Marsden, and many, many more. Now, we're at the top three, and at this point, it gets a little more tricky to decide the order, but at the third spot, I've got John Wick 3. John Wick 1, I remember being really good, but I haven't really gone back to it, but John Wick 2 is fantastic. One of my favorite recent action films. So of course, the third one's gonna be high on my list. Take all the great stuff from the last films in terms of action and the world and Keanu Reeves' performance, and then put it into a film where the entire assassin world is after John Wick. Yeah, this is gonna be brutal. Also, John Wick fights a guy while on horseback. What more do you need? Now in second place, I've got Spider-Man Far From Home. I know, I know, classic BHL having two MCU films at number one and two. I mean, I shouldn't spoil what number one is, because that was still a mystery. But what can I say? I love the MCU, and I especially loved Homecoming. I'm still so impressed how one solo Spider-Man film made me care more about this Peter Parker than any of the other films could do for the other versions. I'm not saying all of those are bad or anything, let's just not get into that. My point is, not only did I love the fun, more small-scale, personal tone of that film, but I love this version of Peter. I love his friendship with Ned, I loved all the relatable, fun high school stuff, so I am really excited to see more of that and what comes next for him. I suspect him and MJ will also have pretty great chemistry. There's also the whole S.H.I.E.L.D. aspect with Fury and Hill. Happy's back. Jake Gyllenhaal seems like a great choice for a new cinematic villain, Mysterio. Peter also having to deal with the repercussions of Avengers 4. And also, on a slightly smaller level, the stress of going on international field trips with your class, which can lead to more great high school stuff. Just everything about this is looking spectacular to me. Now before I get to my number one choice, here are some honorable mentions that I'm still really excited for, just couldn't make the list. Shazam! Looks like a lot of fun, I'm hyped. Captain Marvel. Normally the MCU films rank higher for me, and I'm still very excited for this, don't get me wrong. I love the cast and the premise. It's just so far the trailers really haven't done much for me, and I feel like this might end up being kind of an Ant-Man Thor sort of pretty fun, but not exceptional film, which might be disappointing considering how big of a role they've said Captain Marvel's gonna play in this universe going forward, but still, I'm staying optimistic. Artemis Fowl. I know this is a weird choice, but I absolutely loved the Artemis Fowl books when I was growing up, almost as much as like Percy Jackson or Harry Potter, so I was super excited when they announced this. Kenneth Brown is a great director and the cast looks pretty solid. My only point of caution is that the trailer didn't look that good to me, but still holding out hope. Dark Phoenix. Things aren't looking amazing for this in terms of signs that a movie is going to be bad, but I actually like the trailer and I love most of this cast. If the plot just doesn't follow a super generic X-Men formula, I think this could be something special. The Lion King and Aladdin. I've lumped these together because I'm about equally excited for both of them for different reasons. I think The Lion King has a better cast and team behind it, but I think Aladdin is probably the Disney film better suited for a live action remake, so we'll see. Frozen 2. Yeah, Frozen seems like it came out a lifetime ago, and it's such a staple in pop culture now, but as a film, I really enjoyed it, so I'm curious to see what they're gonna do for the sequel. And finally, that Mr. Rogers film they're making, with Tom Hanks. Mr. Rogers was a big part of my childhood, and that documentary that came out last year was really powerful. So if this can capture that spirit, yeah, I'm gonna cry. And now, huge surprise, number one is actually Avengers Endgame, if you can believe that. I thought I didn't really have much to say about this at this point. I've made a lot of videos on it, and I've got a few more coming up. But I think this would be a good time to clarify how or in what way I'm excited for this. Which I know sounds weird, but just hear me out. Because for a while, I've been saying, not so much on this channel, but just when I talk about it with people in my real life, that this might be the most excited I've ever been for a film, if we just exclude Baby Driver for a second. And I realized that I said a similar thing about Infinity War, and I don't want to just keep saying that every single time a new Avengers comes out, but I genuinely feel that way, and here's why. The thing is, with Infinity War, I was beyond excited for it because it was this culmination of this universe that I'm so invested in, and it had all these characters, and this epic tone, and the trailers looked amazing, and all that. With Endgame, I'm beyond excited for it in a different kind of way. I mean, yeah, some of that stuff is still similar. But it's a way I've never really been excited for a film before. Infinity War was announced back in 2014, and while I was obviously excited for it, I wasn't like thinking about it every day for four years before it came out. That's the case with a lot of these for me. Of course, I'm really excited, but it's not until maybe like a week before where I'm really thinking about it a lot and I'm super hyped. 
With Avengers 4, it's been like that since I got out of Infinity War. I've thought about this more than I have really any other MCU film. Kind of a bit like Baby Driver, if you know the story of how excited I was for that. Because normally, outside of this YouTube channel and some conversations with friends, I don't really think about these movies that much in my daily life. Like as far as like, what's the plot gonna be, or where the character's gonna go, or what's the best moment gonna be, or you know, that kind of stuff. Obviously I still think about movies a lot in my daily life. But with this film specifically, it keeps creeping up in my mind, on almost a daily basis, and it has for months. And I think that's definitely credit to the secret of marketing, and the cliffhanger ending, and all the stuff Marvel's done. They've done an excellent job with this. And so, I've just been thinking, how are they gonna get out of this? What characters are we gonna see? What's gonna happen? Because we still know so little about this, and it's just about four months away. And I love that, so much. Could that set me up for disappointment? Sure. But I think if I can keep my expectations, you know, slightly in check, which I feel, despite this excited, nerdy rant that I just went on, I have been getting good at, then I doubt it will. Point is, yeah, can't wait. So those are the movies coming out next year that I'm most excited for. Did you agree with my list, or do you hate me forever for not having Toy Story 4 on here? Screw it, it could be in the honorable mentions, I don't mind. It'll probably be good. Anyway, let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson, check out this podcast about movies and TV and whatnot I do every so often with a friend of mine, it's called the Poorly Planned Podcast, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.